Kate Middleton is pregnant and suffering from hyperemesis gravidarum again. No, you don't need to be royalty to have hyperemesis gravidarum but your family may affect whether you get it. The 35-year-old Kate Middleton, who is otherwise known as the Duchess of Cambridge, just announced that she is pregnant for the third time. She is probably somewhere between 8 and 12 weeks pregnant depending on what tabloid you read. Also, for the third straight pregnancy, she is suffering from hyperemesis gravidarum, which during her first pregnancy was severe enough to land her in the hospital. To understand what hyperemesis gravidarum is, let's break down the name into its parts. Hyper means a lot or severe just like hyperactive means you are really, really overly active. Emesis means vomiting which means technically you can say I drank far too much so now comes some emesis. Gravid is a term for pregnant, frequently used in medical settings but rarely in social situations. You don't commonly say, hooray, I'm gravid, did you hear that she was gravid or are you gravid? Combined the word means severe vomiting during pregnancy or very bad morning sickness. Roughly half a percent of all pregnancies in the U.S. result in hyperemesis gravidarum. Hyperemesis gravidarum is not your typical morning sickness. The vomiting is so frequent, usually more than three to four times a day, and severe that it can leave you dehydrated, deficient in important nutrients, and unable to maintain a healthy weight, losing more than 10 pounds. As with most cases of bad nausea and vomiting, the key is staying well hydrated by drinking plenty of fluids and well nourished by eating small and frequent meals. If you aren't able to do this at home, you may need to visit a hospital to receive anti-nausea medications, intravenous fluids, and perhaps even feeding through a tube or an intravenous line. Over 59,000 pregnant women in the U.S. require hospitalization each year for hyperemesis gravidarum. Here is an NBC Nightly News segment on the royal announcements. If you do experience such unpleasant symptoms, can you blame your family? Before you say, Yes, your family does make you nauseous and vomit, it's not what your family says or does that may lead to this condition. As the Cleveland Clinic website explains, a potential culprit may be the rapidly rising levels of hormones such as HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin, and estrogen in your blood during pregnancy. However, the exact causes of hyperemesis gravidarum remain unclear, even though scientific studies have identified some possible risk factors. For example, having had a condition in an earlier pregnancy, being overweight, carrying twins, triplets or more, or being pregnant for the first time. No, you may be able to point your finger at your family members because some evidence suggests that such severe morning sickness may run in families. A study from Norway published in the BMJ in 2010 found that women whose mothers suffered hyperemesis gravidarum were three times more likely to have the same problem during pregnancy, based on data from Norway's National Birth Registry. Of course, such results don't necessarily prove that this condition is inherited. But they are consistent with the findings from a study published two years earlier in the European Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology and Reproductive Biology that analyzed the family histories of 1,224 self-reported cases of hyperemesis gravidarum. Among these cases, 28% of the women had mothers who had experienced hyperemesis gravidarium. For those who had sisters who had been pregnant, 19% of their sisters suffered from hyperemesis gravidarum. Besides not getting pregnant, is there anything that you can do to prevent the condition? Some have claimed that consuming vitamin B6 supplements, zinc, or ginger, undergoing acupressure, or wearing pressure point wristbands help. However, a recent Cochrane systematic review of existing scientific studies concluded that not enough quality scientific studies have been conducted to draw any strong conclusions. Other strategies are eating small and frequent meals of blander food and avoiding any food or medication that may cause nausea. Of course, when experiencing severe nausea and vomiting during pregnancy, don't assume that it is hyperemesis gravidarum. Check with your doctor to rule out other possible causes such as food poisoning, infections, gallbladder disease, and pancreatitis. Morning sickness tends to occur between the 6th and 14th weeks of pregnancy although some continue to have symptoms until delivery. Additionally, morning sickness is often not confined to the morning. 
It is actually frequently morning, noon, afternoon, evening, and really late at night sickness. In fact, sickness may be a misnomer too, as a systematic review in reproductive toxicology determined that experiencing morning sickness may be associated with better pregnancy outcomes such as lower rates of miscarriages, birth defects, and premature births. While the Duchess suffers through the symptoms, bookmakers have been accepting numerous bets on the child's gender birth date, and name. As Kate Samuelson reported for time, there are equal bets on the child being male versus female, but Alice is the current name leader, 8 one knots over Elizabeth, 10 one knots James, 12 one knots and Arthur, 12 one knots While some are interpreting the bets on names as more people wanting or expecting a girl, keep in mind that Alice Cooper is male. Samuelson adds, without explaining the reason, that the odds of Donald as the name are 51. No word on where Barack or George W. rank on the list.